So we have this isn't something new that we've talked about on this channel of councils going bankrupt. However, what must be really told is the truth of what happened behind these bankruptcies. Because it wasn't that, as the Tories will tell you, was councils making poor investments and poor business decisions which led to them being bankrupt. No, this is the legacy of austerity. The truth that councils have had their budgets and on, an, on a national average, slashed by over 50%. And some, especially in the North, have been even more worse cut than that. So, the fact that we've had one council go bankrupt this year, and also remember that during austerity, many, many councils relied on the funds that were they had access to through the EU. All those funds, of course, are, are, are gone at the end of the year, that's it. No more. And as a result, this will be the legacy of austerity that we will be having to talk about continuously, at least until either this government, and I say this government in jest because the chances of them actually investing in this country are laughable at best and implausible at worst. <laughs> Or we get, you know, we have to wait four more years, or uh, four more years, essentially, and essentially get a new government in that is generally going to invest in this country. That is the only way forward. So, also, while we're here, please do remember to hit that like and share button, and of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as a one-off donation link, should you like to support the channel. But... On with the article today. So this comes from The Guardian. And the title is. Croydon's bankruptcy is the result of austerity. And more councils will follow. And that is my biggest worry. Because Barnsley. My own uh, county. Uh, my own county council. Not county council. My own town council. Has been very close. Very close in recent times to um, declaring bankruptcy and each time it has managed to just skirt the edges and managed to get off with it but that has meant cutting services cutting jobs which has affected the local area in ways that we've said before if you remember Ian McMillan things just disappear and, you know, it's not just services and things like that. It's money that help run, you know, toddler playgroups and things like that, that help support, you know, young mums and things like that. It, they just disappear. And these are the things that we will lose and have lost because of austerity. And these will have a knock-on effect for decades to come. So, into the article. Croydon is bankrupt. The South London Council last week issued a Section 114 notice, a formal declaration that it cannot meet the legal requirement to balance its books and will halt all of its essential spending. The government's response is simple. Blame the Council. Croydon took bad financial decisions, decisions and made risky investments and is now suffering the consequences. It's the same line that was taken when Northamptonshire Council went bust in 2018 and has been trotted out regularly about local governments as a whole in recent months. It's a convenient fiction that deliberately ignores the context of an almost 50% cut in government funding to councils since 2010. Those, quote, bad financial decisions reflect the inability of some councils to reduce their spending on public services, enough to accommodate that cut. The, quote, risky investments are efforts by council to generate extra income so that spending reductions are not quite so severe. The fault here lies not with councils, but with the decision taken all the way back in 2010 by the coalition government and he to heavily load the burden of austerity onto local government and welfare so that education, pensions and the NHS could be relatively protected from cuts. 
It was a ruthless but politically successful calculation to cushion the areas of the public sector that David Cameron and co knew voters and the media cared most about. It was also, wildly also a wildly reckless move that was bound to make crucial services unsustainable over the longer term. COVID has turned that longer term into a far shorter term. The pandemic and two lockdowns have both ramped up the demand for local government services and massively reduced council incomes. Inevitably, this has intensified the already dire financial pressures, a situation not helped by the government on reneging on a promise made to councils in March to fully reimburse them for the impact of COVID. As a result, Croydon is far from alone. Councils across the country are having to introduce severe cuts and a number are already on the brink of declaring bankruptcy. Ironically, some of the biggest stresses are being reported by Conservative-run county councils, but Labour-run cities are far from exempt. Manchester, Leeds and Liverpool are all planning deep cuts and redundancy programmes and the impact has been deeply felt across the whole of the UK as devolved governments have passed on, have passed on to councils some of the cuts they have received, uh, uh, to, rec to, received uh, to their funding from Westminster. And it is hard to fathom the levels of irresponsibility of successive governments to allow a central plank of the public sector to get into such a perilous state. A decade's worth of austerity for councils has left the country stripped of youth services, community centres, libraries, arts venues, sports facilities, the things that make up the social fabric of our nation. But the economic fabric has also been frayed. With local teams dedicated to regeneration and housing left shadows of their former selves after repeated rounds of redundancies and budget cuts. And at the dark end of the moral failure of the spectrum is the care we provide to the disabled and elderly and to the abused and neglected children incriminate, incriminate, incriminately shoved away both in, in quantity and quietly just as demand for that care has rapidly risen. Cuts have forced the rationing of social care in a way that would have been a national scandal had it happened to the health care provided by the NHS. What is, dead, what is, a, what is adds a deadly surreal air to this unending austerity is that it is reaching its greatest injustice and intensity just as councils have proved how fundamental they are to the nation's health and well-being. While the government has launched and lurched from failed to initiative to failed PR disaster and back again in its fight against COVID, councils have worked energetically with their communities to get on with launching test and trace systems that actually work, ensuring that those in need receive food and support and sending out clear messages about restrictions. A more open-minded government might have recognised this as a good time to direct funding and powers towards that, that part of the system that is proving effective. Instead, it is doubling down on starving local government of funds, picking pointless fights with its leaders and seizing local powers for itself. It's a situation that throws into stark relief a new divide in British politics. On one side, the bloated centralised state that thinks its solution to the nation's problem can be found in policies dreamed up in stuffy rooms in white halls and delivered through multi-million pound contracts, where large corporations, on the other, um, a local state that despite its financial problems in many cases looks to, looks to collaborate more ever closely with its residents to solve, to solve knotty challenges and embrace more... Uh, more more practical more per, uh, more perpetuatory forms of democracy and caring and community led models of service delivery. It's a battle. Be, uh, it's a battle between a tried and tested and unthinking market fundamentalism and a community powered vision for a social justice depend uh, of of decent public services. Croydon is unlikely to be the last council to reach this crisis point, <coughs> but. It should stand as the first and inspiring us to demand and build something far better. And I completely agree. I completely agree. We need to start to think about how we can give 
our councils more power to act better locally. And you may remember some time ago, we talked about how Germany, with its local councils and its local city regions, acted and were able to act quite effectively without even the, you know, the nod from central government. They only went to the central government when we said we got this idea to help, you know, with COVID relief or we need help to, you know, money to put into like this system that's going to help, you know, track and trace and, you know, all these stuff that's helped Germany through the pandemic. It has been fought primarily on the front lines and they have not been the only European country that has done this. I think that we need to go back to give local councils more power and to devolve our system even into more. I am for very much a one Yorkshire plan, which basically would see all of Yorkshire form a regional and central parliament, just like they have in Scotland, just like they have in Wales, so that this can empower the region to help make decisions which will best affect it, made by people that live in that region. You know, we've said it before on this channel, our last Conservative MP that stood for election in Barnsley had never been to Barnsley before in her entire life. Yet, she felt the need to stand that this was the constituency for her. She only arrived once, and that was it. Where did she live? She lived all the way down in Devon. How on earth can an MP represent the local people when she's never even been in the town, or at least lived there for some time, so that at least she gets an idea of what of what the town is like. But a lot of people are experiencing that now firsthand, because, surprise, surprise, a lot of those new Yorkshire um, Red Wall um, uh, Conservative MPs are never, never were there, never experienced the town before, probably don't even live there now. But... There you go. Uh, that's the ridiculous situation we're in. But I've been calling this for a while. And this is something that I've kept up on since Northamptonshire Council has um, announced bankruptcy all the way back in 2018. I've said this, that as soon as these as the councils lose their European funding and money they got, we would start to see more bankruptcies. And lo and behold, it's not just Labour councils and low-run cities that are taking the beating it is predominantly the conservative ones because the conservative run ones have really really laid in to austerity and you only have to look to what state was it now was it kentucky i can't remember if it was kentucky or not but it was one of the very deeply red central like central red belts um you know, Republican strong-held states, you know, that was the Republican governor, Republican, you know, state legislature, all of it was red. And they delved hard into austerity with cuts and everything that they could. And what happened? They were almost at the state of bankruptcy until they decided to reverse those policies. So what is clearly needed here, and clearly needed here, is a very obvious change in direction and that austerity was a bad idea it should have never been implemented and quite frankly these areas are in dire dire need of help and the solutions are there but it's whether or not the government is going to be willing to listen to local councils and people on the ground who know what solutions might work. So with that, thanks for watching. Please remember to hit that like and share button. And of course, uh, if you would like to support the channel a different way, there is my Patreon uh, link down below as well as a one-off donation to buy me a coffee. So with that said, thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.